2023 is going to be an incredible year for hi-fi. Why? I don't know. I'm going to make a bunch of stuff up. Maybe some of it will be right. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about what probably is going to happen in 2023. Maybe. Maybe. Big thank you to today's sponsor, Sith Audio. Sith Audio's at it again with their brand new audiophile certified cable things that you put your cables together with. These are very similar to twisty ties, but they're not. They've actually been coated in Teflon to prevent the RF interference that constantly happens with your uh, interconnects. So anyway, these, which are not twisty ties, Teflon coated kind of twisty tie, they're only $99 a piece. Now you're probably gonna need 45 of them, but that's not a bad deal. Available from your local high-end hi-fi store. Probably, they probably carry Moon by Sim Audio. That's where you can get those. Just to be clear, all of these predictions are based on really nothing. Actually, there's a couple that are based on some conversations that I've had. Otherwise, I'm just making stuff up, okay? So this video is for, well, all my videos really are for entertainment purposes only. So I don't know how much stock I would put into anything that I maybe take everything with a grain of salt, okay? Because I'm probably not going to be right. But it'll be fun next year at the end of 2023 when we go back and see if I got any of these right. So the first one, Spotify is going to go lossless, finally. Finally, it's only been two years that Spotify has been teasing their lossless streaming service. I said in another video, I don't even think they need to have lossless music, but they said they were going to, so maybe they probably should. I think that maybe this year is finally the year that it happens. The year of Spotify at lossless music. But at this point, does it really make a difference? Because you have Amazon Music, you have Cobuzz, you have Apple Music. My brain's not working very good. Deezer, I think, has some lossless. You have a whole bunch. One has a whole bunch of choices for their lossless music. But Spotify's the big boy, the big ape, the big monkey in the streaming music wars. So I suppose if they go lossless, I'll check it out. At this point, though, I kind of like, I, I, I kind of don't care at this point. Anyway. Prediction number two, this one's gonna surprise a lot of people, I think. It's that uh, SMSL, Gustard, and a lot of the other Chinese manufacturers are gonna put out about 3,000 different models of DAX this year. I know, I know. It's tough to comprehend that they're gonna put out a whole bunch of DAX that have one slight little tiny change from the previous generation of DAC that they had one week earlier. But I think there's gonna be a whole bunch of DACs. I know this is crazy for me to say something so controversial that Chinese hi-fi companies are gonna put out a whole bunch of DACs. I think things are changing. In all seriousness though, I think, I think they're gonna to stick to what they've been doing. And that is if a new DAC chip comes out, they're gonna slap it into the same circuit, into a very similar chassis, and send it out the door, basically being the latest and greatest thing. So I'll listen to them. Hopefully there's something that's awesome. There were some standout DACs of last year, for sure, even in the Chinese market. Most of the standout DACs are coming from smaller US-based companies like just Shelly Labs. But who knows? SMSL, Topping, although we're going to talk about Topping here in a second, Gustad, FX Audio, IEMA, Duke Audio, who knows? They could come out with something real, real cool. Whether or not they're going to be real, real cool, only time will tell. <laughs> topping is going to get more and more expensive. I think Topping is pushing into what they perceive as the mm, mid-tier hi-fi. So they're getting more expensive. I think most of the topping stuff that comes out is going to be above $500, if not above $1,000 this year. So I would keep my eye on topping. 
I don't know why. But anyway, I think they're gonna be more expensive. I think they're gonna still make some affordable stuff, but most of it's going higher end, I think. I think that's a mistake too, because they're getting away from what really put them on the map to begin with. And that was high performance, low price products. With the LA90, don't get me wrong, it was good. It was underpowered for the price they were charging though. Also had wonky inputs and it was also expensive, $900. However, if they can start making things that sound that good, a little bit higher power and keep the price, drop the price actually, they can do that i think they can sell successfully successfully but i think the days of really affordable topping stuff are gone they're moving up the chain so once again probably going to see a dozen or so different products come out of topping i would think i think probably most of those are going to be more expensive than they have been historically <laughs> MoFi is going to release a more affordable Andrew Jones concentric driving speaker. Okay, two, just a two-way concentric. So it's gonna be like the Source Point 10, only smaller. Now, I do have some evidence of this because, well, I asked him that question and he said probably. So I think this year we're gonna see an, a Source Point 8 or Source Point 6, which is going to be more affordable, hopefully. Hopefully, how would that be? Hey, we got a smaller speaker for you. By the way, couldn't get the numbers right. It's coming in a little bit more expensive. Anyway, I think we're gonna see a smaller speaker. Makes sense, just about every, if not every new speaker lineup that Andrew Jones has designed always comes out with multiple sizes. You always get a small, medium, and large usually, or a medium and a large, grande, and I don't know, tall. Sometimes a vente. How frustrating was that? Still to this day, I don't quite, I always just order a vente simply because I know that's large. Still to this day, I don't know which one's a small and I don't know which one's a medium. I don't really care because I always get the vente, but still. They had to be different. <coughs> What were we talking about again? Oh, that's right, new MoFi speakers. So I, I have no idea when it's gonna happen. I would imagine second quarter this year, second quarter, we are going to have a new speaker. Maybe not, I don't know. It took them a long time to make the first one. So it could take them a long time unless they've already been designing it concurrently with a source point 10. Anyway, I think we're gonna see a new speaker come out of them, which hopefully is much more affordable. I don't know if it's going to be because I think they have a bunch of driver tech that they had to do themselves and manufacture themselves. But 2023, I think we see a more affordable new MoFi Andrew Jones source point type speaker. Skit starts to dominate the desktop speaker amp category. I have a little bit of evidence for this one too. I did an interview with Jason in the Corpus Christi facility, and he said, don't be surprised if you see a couple, I think he said more than one, desktop amplifiers come out, first speaker amplifiers. So not headphone amplifiers. And he said they're not gonna be class D. So I think there's going to be some, I don't know, maybe even moderately powered desktop amplifiers that fit within the Modi Magni or Magnius Modius stack look. I think there's gonna be something new that's gonna fit right into the aesthetic vibe that you may already have sitting on your desk right now. When Schkit does this, they are totally going to be ripping right into SMSL and Topping's market share. Maybe not IEMA because I think that's kind of, eh, down a little bit the value play in this segment, but if Schkit comes in at a decent price, they are going to completely punch SMSL and Topping right in the face. And I kind of like that. Not because I don't think Topping or SMSL is good per se, I just like Schkit better. 
I like Jason Stoddard. I like the fact that it's made in the U.S. I like the fact that it's made in Texas, too. So, my prediction, 2023, Schitt is releasing one, if not two, desktop amplifiers. And they are going to spell trouble if they come in at the right price for our friends at Topping and SMSA. I think ELAC is going to refresh... I think ELAC is going to refresh or start a new mid-affordable line. So think the B6, B6.2. I think there's going to be a new one this year. Could be wrong, but I think they're, I think it's time. I think we've been long enough. I think we're going to have the first B series that is not designed by Andrew Jones. The reason I say this is because we already have the BS41. It could be the BS51 or the BS61 that is available only through Amazon. Could be that. It would be good. It would be cool to see that because the BS41, I think, is a great speaker. And I think it harkens back to the original generation of the B-Series that Andrew Jones designed. However, if they don't make that speaker, I think we're going to see another 6.3, maybe a 5.3, maybe, dare I say, a 4.3. Anyway, I think it's about time. And I'm not saying that like, it's about time you do that. No, I think it's about time that ELAC is going to refresh that kind of affordable speaker because Polk did it with the um, ES series, Signature Elite series. I think Klipsch is getting ready to do it because Klipsch refreshed the RP series, which is a little bit more expensive. So I think maybe it's time for ELAC to do the same thing. I predict ELAC comes out with a affordable speaker line 2023 i also think wharfdale is going to come out with a brand new low tier line the d series which was really good was discontinued you can't get them anymore i think wharfdale maybe by the end of this year i don't know how long it takes to design a speaker at a place like wharfdale anyway the D-Series is discontinued, which means I think there is opportunity for them to compete with Polk, Elac, Klipsch. So I think, I would imagine, that Wharfdale is going to come out with a new affordable series. This one, I don't know if it's happening. I think it may happen, though. I think a Sound United, which is B&W, Polk... Denon, Marantz, they own a bunch, so it's like a big company mashup. It's a brand soup. It's a super brands. And it's owned by a corporation. Dude. I think one of those from Sound United or one from Vox, and Vox is Kalipsch. It is Onkyo. It's Pioneer. It's Ayamo. It's a whole bunch of those brands. Vox. It's kind of called the Klitsch Group, but it's within Vox. Jensen, like that. Vox, interestingly enough, is publicly traded. So you can see how Klipsch is doing at any time by going to the stock market and searching Vox. Koss, Koss headphones, they're also publicly traded, which is interesting to go compare Koss stock versus Vox stock and see which one the market thinks is a more, I don't know, healthy company. I think they both do okay. They're not gonna set the world on fire, but they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, and that's making money and returning money to the shareholders. Anyway, I digress. What was I talking about? Oh, I think there's going to be either a legacy brand, so that's one that's been around for a while, or there's going to be a new brand from either Sound United or Vox, and I think they're gonna test a direct-to-customer model, which means they may be kind of hinting around about getting away from dealers. I think dealers serve a purpose. I think they need to be there. But if we've learned anything from the car industry, your distribution is not necessarily that important if you want to sell to customers direct. The companies that are making the biggest impact on audio are all direct to Customer, and I say customer, not consumer, because we are customers, not consumers. Technically, we are consumers, but I don't like the, I don't like the terminology, consumer. 
It's a negative, negative connotation. Customer is much better for customers. Anyway, Emotiva, Gishelli Labs, Schkit are mm, like, especially Emotiva and Schkit are just like, it, they're almost, it's almost like this is too easy for them because they're just taking up market share right and left. Emotiva has some great stuff coming out this year. Schkit's just having fun and just making stuff and then just taking market share, man. So anyway, I think I, I think they're late to the game, but I think either a Sound United brand or a Vox brand is gonna start toying around with direct to customer model because they have to. Emotiva is finally gonna do it and they're gonna release a new double cassette deck. High speed dubbing, double cassette deck. I'm just kidding. I don't think there's any way Emotiva is going to release a double cassette deck. If they did though, I would review it and I would probably buy it. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Discord group, Patreon only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Amazon Music. <laughs> Title, music, rune, music. Links in the description, click sign up. Even if you quit, I get a couple of dollars. You can also use the affiliate links in the description. If you click and you buy, I get a commission but it doesn't cost you any more. So it's a great way to support the channel. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.